so you're having an exorcism. You want burgers? I don't. Some chicken and ribs. I like how we always start these things with like, I know. do you got a joke? No. Do, do you, you have a joke? joke? No. Oh, shit. We never know how to start these things. <laughs> That's true. So why don't we start this with um, talking about starting it? Did you just start it? <laughs> We're starting a show with a, 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 a bit about <laughs> starting a show. It's not a bit. It's a real life like conversation it is it is a very like if you guys could see some of the behind the scenes man just the fact that we're sitting here just discussing well do you want to go first or should i go first this time well you went first like the past two times maybe you should come up with something you know <laughs> the, the real question is why don't we think of this like the day before i know you think we'd write these a little better but <laughs> we do not we're we flying not. by the seat of our pants. I'm telling you. And speaking of flying by the seat of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not sure how that works with the, the title of our show, but <laughs> welcome to Night of the Horror File, a horror movie and genre film podcast where we take a horror movie and genre film and show it to my beautiful wife, Brittany, who then gives us her input. And sometimes she likes these things and sometimes she doesn't. She is our resident not movie person. <laughs> Not movie person. Okay. Not movie person. Because, you know, we got some new listeners, people under 18, which is really disturbing. Oh. You guys need to like Could not... you go back to the crib, please? That's so weird. I've said so many bad things. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, anyway, that's what the E is for. I think our asses are covered because we got that E for explicit. Uh, on oh, the... I thought it was E for everyone. Or E for edutainment. <laughs> Edu there edu ain't no edu part of that. We're teaching it. you. We're teaching you so much, so much that Oklahoma school systems can turn out to piles of trash, and you know it's a good time. But but anyway, anyway, that's not why we're here today to to self depreciate ourselves. No, 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 no. We are here because it is April, and you know what time April is here on Night of the Horror File. That's right. It's trauma month. <laughs> Didn't I do this last time? I think so. I, I love how your your uh, your sound effect of a of a horn going off is bow ba da bow 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 bow. Bow 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 bow. Wow. Someone just That's what I think fireworks sound like too. Bow bow. Bow 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 bow. Maybe I watched too much blues clues as a kid. <laughs> you do sound more like blues. <laughs> Wow. That is a sound effect, you guys. That's going to be in a movie I make. <laughs> anyway. You're going to have fireworks. He's going to take a video of people <laughs> setting up fireworks. But you, you, you can't. You can't do the audio because it's too loud. And yeah. I'm just in the background. Bow, 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 bow. A little ADR you in making the sound effects. Yeah. Bow. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. Bow. Like a big one goes off. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you guys are wondering if we just lost our ever loving mind. No, we did not. No, we did not. It is trauma it's month. It's not lost. It is trauma. <laughs> it isn't. It isn't. It's found. It never was there. In trauma. <laughs> but, but yes, it's trauma month, man. We are celebrating all things trauma this month. It's a good time. And, uh, I, you know, speaking of which, on tr every time, every trauma month, you can watch all the movies featured here on Troma Now, the Troma app, which is now available on Roku and on your phones and on your computer. Man, there is an app for that now. Like you can you can watch this shit on the it's on nice. the Roku. On the Roku. You can watch all the Troma movies. It's nice. I know. That is nice. Never thought I'd see the day because Troma movies are have always been like kind of hard to find unless you order it from their website. But now they're all right there at your fingertips. It's, oh, a, it's right an amazing there. app. Have oh, I just lost my brain? Your Brittany just like zoned out. No, She's I was going to say what's. Oh, to, I was going to say have a toxic marathon. D yeah, there you go. Have a toxic marathon. Yeah. This month, uh, this trauma month, we're doing something a little different. Like I thought we'd look more at uh, some darker movies. And uh, some just at least one just pure independent film. 
I you like know? it. And that's like what we're it. doing today because what did we watch this week? The Good Exorcist. That's right. The Good Exorcist from 2018. And uh, so as we mentioned on our Terrifier episode uh, this past, like, what was that, last month? We wanted to do more indie films. Right. Like, I, I wanted to do a lot more indie stuff because, I don't know, you, you want to highlight the bare bones creativity of some awesome filmmakers. And what better time to do it than during Trauma Month? Because, you know, trauma is pure independence, man. Our last pure independent film company left. And I know some of you guys are saying Blumhouse, but no, 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 no. We're not talking about the $10 million independent movies. <laughs> not that. But um, today's feature actually began as part of Robert Rodriguez's Rebel Without a Crew television series uh, on the El Rey Network, which is based off of his book, Rebel Without a Crew, um, which is – you ask any independent filmmaker, that's the independent filmmaking Bible. <laughs> like, oh. It teaches you so much you need to know in there. And so I always suggest people go and get it. Although I also use Make Your Own Damn Movie by Lloyd Kaufman. That's another <laughs> little Bible of mine that I follow. But um, but no, uh, if you want a more in-depth look at the making of today's feature, because mostly what we're going to be talking about today is the film itself. Right. You know, but if you want a more in depth and behind the scenes, you need to go check that out. It's actually streaming free on Roku or you can buy the Blu-ray. I believe there's a, a special making of uh, behind the scenes look on the that Blu-ray, which you can buy at traumadirect.com. So, you know, good times. But um, – <laughs> Sorry. That was weird. I'm sorry. I was trying to be quiet. It wasn't working. That was your, the look on your face. You were like. Um. <laughs> now, uh, the creativity of today's uh, feature comes from Josh Stifter. Uh, now, Josh also owns the award-winning animation studio Flush Studios, which a lot of his animation appears in today's film, in fact. Uh, he does some wonderful fucking work with oh, his yeah. animation, man. I've seen so much stuff, like his fucking his parody of The Simpsons I saw one time. The Samsons. <laughs> the Samsons. <laughs> I, his sense of humor. And we'll talk about it throughout this uh, movie today, but his sense of humor aligns with mine. I love that weird, gross kind of. And uh, of course, he also does the the uh, Flush Studios podcast and stuff like that. He did Elevator Pitch with John Brennan for a little while, which I love that little show. I don't I don't know if they're doing any more episodes, actually, but um, it was basically they just sat around and like or the Escalator Pitch. I'm sorry. They pitched like bad movies. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it's pretty good. But this is his debut film. You know, I think he had mm -hmm. done a, a short film before, but this is his debut. And he went on into this one with little budget, barely any time <laughs> and tons upon tons of constant interruption from a reality television crew while Rebel Without a Crew was filming, which we actually sat down and watched. I, I had yeah. watched it once before and I kind of forgot. And so it was a it was a kind of a brush up for me to to watch watch it in preparation for the show yeah. and i i gotta ask you because you were actually really you really kind of got into it <laughs> yes <laughs> i asked me what uh, ask you how you enjoyed that show because i think a lot of you guys really owe it to yourself to go check that out i mean it's a good little show if you want to like make a movie it like... really is if you're a filmmaker uh an actual you know if you're a filmmaker i think it's a very good show for you to watch it really yeah. like i don't it's really inspiring right and it kind of shows you like the behind the scenes like yeah oh, the these people are fucking talking while i'm fucking filming like <laughs> yeah yeah because i know i know some people probably think oh well it's robert rodriguez doing this then you know it's uh yeah he's probably helped no he sends it he throws them right into the fire man <laughs> yeah. they are in the shit and it is brutal looking it is a brutal thing and so mm. it, and it's not a game show i thought it was like one of those one of those competition things oh right because no. I, I believe there was a television show like that and i think matt damon had a hand in it but like where filmmakers competed and their the winning film got put out and i was like that's that i just feel like that's fucked up right because that's a lot of hard work for it to yeah. not even do anything <laughs> to not see, and and i couldn't even tell you the name of that show or the fucking movies that were involved and so that's pretty sad yeah but today's I, i'd say all the you know i think you asked me you were like was his the best and i was like no no i was like i think everybody did an amazing job on their movies mm -hmm. i saw all the movies except for one 
uh, which I, I don't know what happened. I think I just lost track and didn't get to watch it. But everybody does an amazing job on that oh, show. Yeah. And so it, it's it's good stuff. But uh, the idea for this movie, it I, I would say it's along the lines of a midnight future, kind of like those late night cable flicks back in the 90s. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anybody remembers those, but there was a lot of those things popping up. It just... <laughs> Just weird fucking movies, man. That would that would come and go. I mean, a lot of them kind of, I don't know. They 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 kind kind of lost to the times. But we have we have like a little of everything in today's movie. I don't oh, know. If, yeah. You couldn't really call it a, a straight comedy. You couldn't call it a straight horror movie. It's a nice mix of everything. Yeah. Which for an early filmmaker, I think that's a really hard thing to pull off. Yeah, I would say so because. Th- I don't know. There's just so many elements to this. And it's ambitious. Like if uh, I'm going into movie making, by the way, if you guys wanted to know that, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going into filmmaking and um, I would say I'm not as ambitious as that. I don't know if I want to tackle two, two genres. At right. Once. Right. I think I'd rather do just a horror movie or just a comedy or just an action, you know, something like that. I, I think I want to stick to one genre for now. And so, like, you see this and he gets that balance just right, because I think this movie is great. It's got it's got a little bit of horror in it and stuff and a little bit of comedy and all comes to it meshes real well. Yeah. Now, Josh got selected for the show after he had sold one of his cartoons to the L.A. Network. And while discussing stuff with them in L.A., he mentioned how Robert Rodriguez's book, Rebel Without a Crew, acted as his Bible, which those of us, you know, like I said, and the indie filmmakers really do stick to that book to find our way. It's it's a very inspiring book. But for me, it's also, uh, oh, I already said that. Sorry, I'm pausing for. You're fine. But he was asked to submit an idea to the show. And so he sent an outline, mocked up a poster, and uh, they dug it. So in under two weeks, along with Daniel Deegan, uh, who plays uh, Father Gill. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he finished his script and they okayed it. Now, Josh had two weeks to pull this off. 14 days to pull this off with a budget of $7,000, which is low. Yeah. <laughs> low budget, man. Uh, so, so with that insanely stressful idea in mind, let's dive into The Good Exorcist from 2018. So during the opening credits. You know. Oh, my God. <laughs> Lee's tied to a bed. He's possessed by a demon. And Father Trejo has to come fuck the demon out. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Whoa. Whoa now. Whoa I mean, now. How do you get the demon out? I don't know. I could use somebody fucking the demon out of me. I could tell you that. What? <laughs> Just right. No, no, no. Not 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 female persuasion. <laughs> I was like, uh, were you not there this morning? <laughs> no, 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 you did. We all did a good job. But I mean <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> oh my god. This took a turn, man. We just lost some subscribers. <laughs> but um, a lot of people who start out to do a movie think that the budget dictates how your finished product is going to be. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Right. Uh, there is a reason why some of the most inspiring films ever cost very little money. I mean, you think back to Evil Dead. Didn't cost that much. Right. Uh, you think back to all those all those horror films that we hold in such high esteem cost very little money to make. Maybe not 7000 you know. Right. But it, they had bigger budgets than that, but still. Right. Much lower than what today. It boggles my brain that an independent movie – in Hollywood, is considered ten million or under. Right, ten million dollars is a chunk That's a of, fucking lot of fucking change. money. Yeah, That's insane. But um, but you know, I think you know when you strip away all the money and stuff, you get all that stuff stripped away from you. That's when your creativity takes over. Oh yeah. That's why some of these stick out so much. And I think that today's film really does that because it really does separate the artist from the people just sitting out and trying to make money. Right. Yeah, you see that a lot. Oh yeah. Like you see a lot of uh filmmakers who come out with a you know, I made a zombie flick cuz zombies are in are in vogue and no one no one talks about this movie. And then they get upset and they just stick with the one movie they made and just keep trying to sell it. Keep trying to push it and it's like, "No, go on to something else." Right. Like, cuz the next one's going to be better and better and better. Yeah, you, you got you got to you got to at least come up with something unique. Right. You know, just just doing a, a a fucking Walking Dead 
ripoff is not no it's not good. it's not fun it's no. not unique it's not really going to get your stuff noticed and so when you strip away all the budget and stuff and all the bullshit and the bells and whistles what you're left with is having to be creative right and stuff and i think that really shows when people don't have a big budget it really shows the creativity for sure because yeah. you got to find ways to do everything because and- also like it also shows if you don't have a very creative mind you know oh, maybe yeah. maybe you're a good director but you need a writer. Right. You know, it, it shows that too. So you, you might run into that, I think. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, so back to our movie. The one that Lee's not in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany made some kind of fucked up movies. She's talking about raping me. <laughs> to de- raping demons out of me. I think I'm going to I'm gonna do that. Can I do that? Is that legal? Can I do a, a movie where people like fucking rape <laughs> demons out of people? Wow. I'm going to get fucking... <laughs> blacklisted probably <laughs> jesus <laughs> so during the opening credits uh someone's tied to a bed and he's possessed father treo shows up and he starts to perform an exorcism well the dude ends up ripping off treo's head with his tentacles that come out of his mouth D- dude Dude. That's fucking cool. Yes. I, 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 I got to say, I love the animation in this. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes, it's kind of cheesy, but I think that's part of the fun. Right. Like, I think, I know I know a lot of people would see that and be like, oh, my God, that is that is bad or something. Because it's animation. Right. But me, I, I love it because it's it it's so funny. Oh, know? yeah. I, I think that's what makes this movie uh, stick out among a lot, of, a lot of indie films because it's not afraid to be funny. Like, right. It's not afraid to like sit there and poke fun at its own stuff. Like, right. It's good. I thought it was great. Like tentacles, I was not expecting that. No, no, that no you're, really yeah. you're really not. You're really not. So this is probably one of my favorite scenes in this whole thing, okay? Oh god. This is where we meet Father Gill. He is a cowboy looking priest in Texas that likes to listen to death metal music from a tape player. <laughs> Man, I just, I I dig that shit. I dig that weird shit when like you see these movies that take place in modern times and someone has a fucking cassette player. Right. Just, it adds so much more character. Right. You know, to the thing. Oh my gosh. It I don't know. This guy's hilarious to me. Cause he's also like really fucking tall man what did you say because this is uh this is daniel D- uh, deegan who helped write this right and what did you say you found out his height it yes. was like fucking what six five or six, six seven jesus he's tall yeah which is really cool because it adds to the movie because i think it adds to his humor oh yeah him being so tall because you just i don't know don't expect when i think of priests okay i think of little old men okay little old you do men. yeah yeah especially like you you watch classic movies like this when they're performing yeah. exorcisms it's always something like that and they're always clean shaven yeah and this guy has a full on fucking beard he's tall as hell he's wearing cowboy boots and a <laughs> cowboy hat listening to fucking death metal yeah he's just and for I, I gotta say, you know, because Josh Stifter is from, uh, I believe he's from Minnesota, is where he's from. In Minnesota. fact, like so, like, because uh, I gotta say, like, it, it, this is the most like Texas movie from a non-Texan. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is great because it oh, really, yeah. it really does fit the scenery, and he does a great job at his setting. You know, like it looks his like setting Texas. Feel, yeah, it feels like you're in the heart of Texas. And when you watch that show and you realize that this set was all just one big thing, like it was all one big thing. I think they shot some of it in his own house, you know, because cheaper. Right. But like you had one strip and that's your setting. Right. But for some uh, the way Josh makes it feel, he f- makes it feel bigger. Like it's a lot. I don't know. You don't feel contained. I feel like mm-hmm. when you do when you do a movie that's set in one central location, and uh, and yeah, you go outside here. Like that helps too. But like right. also like because you don't usually want to do that unless you're doing a movie that's take that's yeah like the thing you know where where it's contained to one area. Right. You know, usually you don't do that unless it's something like that. But he 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 makes it seem like he pulls it off pretty effortlessly. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. So, uh, Gil goes to perform an exorcism on a teenage girl that is chained to a bed. Her mother has her fucking chained. Like, these <laughs> big-ass fucking chains to a bed. Uh, 
And all he does is like dance around and put a crucifix around her neck, and he, then he's done. Like sh- this is it. Wait, I, I love that because okay. he's like the power crash compels you. <laughs> <It's insane. laughs> Man, and he does a good job because this is pretty much your cold opener. Oh yeah, and he does a fucking awesome job because he makes it. He sets the fucking mood for the rest of the movie. Oh yeah, it's gonna be goofy. Yeah, and he's gonna get his shit done. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fun ride, as what we're yeah. Oh yeah. So then he goes to the church, and the other priest there basically tells him that he's a piece of shit because he doesn't spend enough time in his home church. Obviously, he doesn't call him a piece of shit, but I was gonna say I don't remember that part. <laughs> Hey, you piece of shit. Yes. <laughs> but he basically tells him that. Oh, yeah, I know. In the d- nicest words, man. I always hate it when people do that shit to me. Like when they call me a piece of shit, but in really nice words. Right. And I don't know that he was being really nice, but he was kind of nice. Oh, true, true, yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> Then, while Gil's talking to this other priest, he gets a call about Father Trejo and says that he will be there sometime tomorrow to assist. So we know that he's going to this family's house because Father Trejo had died there. Right. (laughs) But he puts this note on the church door and he's like, going to help the other shit. The sheep and the shepherd or something (laughs) like that. So he's supposed to be at this church. Yeah. Like, he's supposed to be ahead of this fucking church, and he's just not. He's like, I'm busy, okay? <laughs> All the time. I, I kind of like uh, the, the depth of Father Gill here. Like, he's 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 a really cool fucking character. Yeah. And I think that's what, like, helps propel this movie, which um, the acting in this movie is great. Oh, that's yeah. That's another thing. For a low-budget oh, yeah. feature, the acting's very good. And uh, But Father Gill is something else, man. You just want more. Of him. Oh, yeah. Like, even after this, like, you want sequels and you're like, where's the fucking Father Gill fucking TV show? <laughs> yes. So I have a question, though. Okay. Um, These actors and stuff, uh-huh. did the film crew, like, for the show that they were doing while doing this, did they provide these actors? They did a giant casting call. Like, they nice. got a bunch of people together, a bunch of actors together and did a big ass casting call in like a gymnasium looking thing. Uh-huh. Like, like I said, watch the show. It's awesome. But like, so anyway, like they get, you know, they had to go through and select their cast and stuff. So that was even uh, oh, so difficult. They got to select. Yeah, it was cast. difficult. And, and Josh Stifter, he's not a casting guy or he wasn't, uh-huh. you know, so th- that's another thing on top of it. He's got to figure out how to cast his movie, get the characters that he wants. Right. Uh, luckily, Deegan, he, he was there for him to play pa- Father Gill, even though Deegan wasn't really an actor. Yeah, so this is his first movie. This is his first acting role, which is outstanding because oh, I'm yeah. like, I want more of him. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, because I did miss some of the episodes. You did. You you caught in like at the halfway through. Yeah, Mark. But like, yeah, it it was. It's really cool how they ca- they just had a, an actual casting call, right? Which is something I, I I don't think a lot of people get the the privy to do. You know, most of the time mm-hmm. you're casting friends and family, which Josh Stifter was pretty much used to that by now. You know, he had done short films with friends and family. Right. So, like, that's typically who you stick with because you can't pay these people. Right. <laughs> that's another hard thing. And I don't know if these actors were paid for this. Like, that's one thing I'm not really sure. But – for the most part, when you're making your your low budget movie, you got to figure out a way to do this with very little money. Right. And so you're trying to get people in your movie. You're like, it's yeah, only 14 so, days. So man. typically you rely on friends. <laughs> right. Um. No, I thought that was cool. I just didn't know. I just wasn't sure uh, because obviously these people have acted before. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's also a thing. Like, you you have, like, real actors doing the thing here. Right. And, uh, like like I said, just everybody does a good job, I think. You know, Brittany uh, Ortiz, 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 I, I, I'm probably, probably saying Ortiz. wrong. Ortiz, who plays Maria, who we haven't met yet, but we'll meet in a little bit. She does a fantastic job, too. Oh, yeah. She's awesome in this movie. I love the, the dude that plays Stanley. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, he Avery is... Avery Merrifield. He every scene he's in, he like elevates things. Yes. Like he is so goddamn funny. He's so goofy. Oh yeah, my and he doesn't. He barely says stuff. Like he doesn't say a lot. <laughs> but like it's just his body, his acting is so yes. fucking over the top. It's hilarious. 
Yes. So then we see Gil listening to the radio about how revelations are here and that these are the end of times. And then we see him setting up, uh, suiting up, sorry, to dr- and drive to the Willow's house. This is the family, the, the Willows. Right, right. Um, he meets Stanley, and Stanley's kind of weird, and just keeps saying that he's the ranch hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. He's the ranch hand. He's like, I'm the ranch hand. I'm the okay. ranch hand. Okay. I will say, like, if you guys are trying to get a, a a lock on what kind of humor this is, I would say this movie's like a cross between the Evil Dead, like Evil Dead Two, and fucking uh, uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Oh yeah, that's the kind of humor you're dealing with. Just this, like, kind of almost cringy kind of humor. Yeah, like it's. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to look at it that way. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So Stanley is Mister and Willow, Mister and Mrs. Willow's son. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Willow, uh, they come out uh, to talk to Gil. By the way, they don't have names in this movie, so I'm going to call them no, mom. Just, yeah, just mom, mom and, and dad, dad basically. Yeah. Like, which uh, Ali uh, Meyer, who plays uh, Miss Willow, man, she has some funny fucking bits here. Oh here yeah, there, where she's, my Bible, <laughs> my telephone. Um, so they come out to talk to Gil, and the mom is freaked out. She was like, we can't sell any or we can't rent any rooms. We can't do anything here (laughs) Uh, because I guess they live on this ranch. Let's do a little backstory. They live on this ranch and I guess they rent out rooms, Mm -hmm. kind of like an Airbnb ish kind of situation. And um, obviously there are places possessed. Yeah. You can't be renting out and people getting possessed and whatnot. Like that kind of sucks. You're going for a vacation in Texas and just fucking get, I don't know. You got to get a demon ass raped out of you. Uh what? Nobody ass rapes anyone. I'm sorry. Uh, what? <laughs> oh, okay. I was about to say I want to go here, but not now. <laughs> well, you know, that's that's a special ranch you go to. I think that you got to pay extra. Is that like- It's a whole thing. Michael Jackson's ranch? Oh, oh. <laughs> is it too soon for a Michael Jackson joke like that? That too was soon. good. That was too good. Too soon. No. And, and you got to- yeah, Like, that's an under 13 ranch, though. That's what that is. Oh, too old for that ranch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you're too old to ride this ride. (laughs) (laughs) Jamon. Oh, fuck. The spirit of Michael Jackson is here. (laughs) To rape the demons out of you. Oh, God, no. (laughs) You're too old for me. (laughs) Anyway, Gil says that demons are like zits and show up unexpectedly, pus and bleed a lot. (laughs) The and he's kind of freaked out by Stanley because Stanley's just like staring at him all weird. <laughs> and he's just like, he's just trying to explain how demons are like zits. And he, he just, just keeps, keeps looking, looking at Stanley Stan- like, what the <laughs> fuck? I think Stanley's like oh. really trying to soak in this conversation. Yeah, just- um, about um, demon zits. Um, and, and, and there's so many, there's so many visual jokes in this movie too. That's yes. another thing that's really good. You do have to watch it. Yeah. I, Watched it on my phone the first time that I watched it, and that was kind of a mistake. And I was so glad you hooked up the Roku so we could watch it. I, I will say, yeah, this is this is the rare uh, time where like an indie film like this really deserves to see on the biggest oh, yeah. screen you can. Oh yeah, like not to sound like Martin Scorsese over here, but like, <laughs> yeah, you did. Don't watch this on your phone. Watch it on a big old screen. Yeah. So they take Gil inside and tell him about what happened with Trejo. Gil is talking about demons like they're no big deal. I I, I love his cadence because he's like, yeah, demons, yeah. this and that. They're like zits. Right. Just- <laughs> they happen like all of this. He's so used to it. I he's know. He's like, like I'm here. To get rid of them. Don't worry about it. Right. Well, then he pulls out a flask and mom is like, what? Father, what are you doing? It's only eight in the morning. <laughs> and he's like, it's just holy water. But I love that his flask has a mustache on it. Yeah. That's what I mean. There's just like these little like fucking hilarious. Apparently, like throughout this movie, uh, Josh Stifter found it like fucking hard not to laugh during his takes. He he kept laughing. (laughs) I think there was one take that he did that he just kept laughing over and over again. Then he had to end up like poking himself with a fucking pen right before he started shooting just to get through it. Oh, no. Which is, I'm, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was like, man, how am I going to like not laugh? 
Because you can't be shooting a movie and giggling. Like, oh, that's going to be my biggest problem. It's going to be hard. Like if I have, if I'm anywhere near and I'm, I'm going to be laughing. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to have to walk away because I cannot not laugh. Okay. And I laugh at the most awkward situations. Especially because like, what was I saying? I was telling you about a scene. I, I, so when I get ideas for like these things that I'm writing, I have three things I'm writing at the moment, but like these, I, I always have like one scene in mind. And like, I was telling you about this one I want to do. And I was like, yeah, and this demon's just having sex with somebody, like just ramming somebody. <laughs> I was like, and I was thinking, dear God, could you imagine trying to film that? <laughs> just a dude in a demon costume, just ramming somebody. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> no one's going to make it through that shoot. Anyway, so I want to know, do you think he was drinking holy water or do you think he was drinking the hooch? That's a good point because nobody, it, it's never really answered. No. I think it's probably, I think he's drinking a little. I think so too. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> I mean- you got to drink to deal with well, the Well, because you, you right? also find out he's dealing with some shit, you know? Like, we find out later that he, you know, there was a there was an incident during a fucking oh, exorcism. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You find out he has, he has some ghosts here. <laughs> yes. So then he ends up showing them a tape, a VHS, a VHS <laughs> tape, okay? And it's called, So You're Having an Exorcism. I, I love this thing because it's like a, it's a cartoon, which <laughs> yes. obviously Josh did all the animation on this. Yeah. And it's so fucking funny. Oh, it's hilarious. It's so fucking funny. His animation reminds me kind of like a cross between like maybe like, like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon and like fucking Rin and Stimpy. Like that's oh, what yeah. it reminds me of a lot. So you got this shit playing. It is it's so funny because it's delivered like one of those old PSA ads. <laughs> yes. like, so you're having an exorcism. <laughs> but this is a cartoon about how Father Gill can get rid of the demons, but th there's side effects to it. Okay, <laughs> one of the side effects is possibly even death. And then I guess I, I didn't read off the list. I was going to go back and put the list in here and I didn't mm -hmm. do that. Sorry, guys. No, it's all right. Um, but one of them is diarrhea. And so the dad's like, wait, wait, wait. When does the <laughs> diarrhea start? <laughs> Man, that would be so insult to injury fucking possession. And you just start shitting yourself. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, why does everything end with diarrhea? <laughs> it really does, too. Why oh, is yeah. The human body sucks, man. I like, agree. why does everything involve diarrhea? Like, oh, I got a cold. Oh, fuck, I got the shits. What the? F <laughs> I don't why can't I just have a solid shit? You know what would be a blessing is having a solid shit when you're sick. Okay, like but hold on a second. Okay. I have to defend us gallbladderless people here, okay? <laughs> because if you have a gallbladder, you have a good solid shit. If you don't have a gallbladder, most, You're not taking solids? Most of the time not. Oh, that I'm so sorry. I'm saying I'm thinking like 95% of the time not solid. Oh no. <laughs> yes. Oh no, because that is great. Like that is great at the end of the day and you take that big old solid shit. Nope. Not one of those ones that's so hard it's like a fist ripping out of your Okay, anus. so that's the other five percent. Oh yeah. you get the fist? Yeah. Oh, no, man. Not the fist hurt. You that know, shit sucks. Okay, so you know when I'm constipated? Yeah, yeah. That's what's trying to come out of me. The fist? Yeah. A reversed fisting. You never want a reverse fisting. <laughs> I don't even want a regular fisting, but a reverse fisting is even worse. And you know what's crazy is like, I could, right now I'm not constipated. Let's just put it out there, okay? I'm not constipated. <laughs> Somehow we started talking sorry. about bowel movements. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, everybody. So I'm not, right? Yeah, yeah. And, um... If I ate a greasy cheeseburger in 10 minutes, I'm going to fucking be shitting myself. Like, it's just going to come out of me, right? Yeah, yeah. But when I'm constipated because I don't have a gallbladder, I could eat a greasy cheeseburger and it'd take three days for that shit to come out. Man, see, see, it's the little things in life, you guys. Be thankful if you're taking solids. Right. Just be thankful. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry about that, Father We Kill. just derailed everything. <laughs> Anyway, so mom asks about the uh, the the possibility of death part, and Gil says that he may have to end the grace period. This might be my favorite way to say kill somebody. Uh, end the grace period of some people to send the demon back to hell. Again. I can't, I want to threaten someone like that. I'm about to end your grace period. <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah. That sounds like a cool ass like lethal weapon one liner. 
<laughs> I really like the way that they put that. <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. Oh my god. Brittany's never seen no, that movie, so she's just staring about. at me right now. Anyway, he says that the Lord's work can be a little messy, like a plumber. He says people are toilets and demons are fecal matter. This is why we're talking about shit. Yeah, you got to <laughs> plumb the depths and get the demon out. Yes. And the, the dad says, uh, who's the plunger? <laughs> <laughs> and I got to say, man, so far, you know, you're having a damn good time with, some, with, with, a, with an idea that's kind of overdone. You know, the exorcism movie. Oh, right. That, that is a thing that just gets done to death, especially now. Everybody's exercising everything in the fucking movies now, man. You got The Conjuring. You got Insidious. Everybody's just fucking trying to get demons out of somebody. <laughs> sometimes it's overly religious. Sometimes it's not. But either way, you're trying to get a demon out and it's tiring. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's a trope that's just like, let's be done with this. Right. Like th they said that David Gordon Green, who just did Halloween and Halloween Kills, is doing an exorcist reboot. And I was like, God, I don't give a fuck. I you do not need that. I just that. don't need that. I don't need that no. in my life. Let's move on. And here, though, like Josh really does a good job of keeping this shit interesting. It, it makes it fun and it makes it something that like you want to watch. Right. Right. So while while dad is showing Gil around, the piano starts to shoot flames and talk to Gil. It says hellfire awaits. And that the Lord is dead. <laughs> and Gil's just talking to this possessed piano like it's no big deal that any of this is even fucking happening. He's like, yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hellfire, eh? Yep. But <laughs> what? what? But that, that is, that's a reaction you want to. Like, I... I that's another thing in those movies. They always react so shocked to fucking shit. And you're like, you've been doing this for decades, you said. Right. You had never <laughs> seen a, like something start talking to you? Like, this is all new to you, huh? And Gil's like, I did like six of these last yeah, week. Yeah, like, it's like so, <laughs> such a nonchalant <laughs> attitude to the whole thing. And by the way, the dad does not believe that any of this is like, the dad does not believe in Gil at all. Okay. Right. The, the, he's going to be able to help. So yeah, you, you always got to have that skeptical character. Yeah. This kind of thing. Yeah. So I just wanted to preface that because I don't think I put that in here a lot. And just so you know, he's skeptical. <laughs> which means we have character depth, which is kind of nice. Yeah. It is. It is nice. Yeah. Yeah. What that, that's another thing, man. Like you see so many of like real low budget films, which not hating on those directors, you know, like I said, I, I hate being mean to some of these indie filmmakers. <laughs> right. It just feels wrong to me. But you see some of these guys, what they do wrong, I think, is not flesh their characters out. You know, not sit down and really think about who their characters are. Right. They just come up with a concept with one good character and then everybody else is just a backdrop. Whereas in this movie, I would say everyone's just as interesting as uh, Father Gill. Yeah, because, uh, well, so far we have mom, dad, Gil, and Stanley. And Stanley's the weird one. The dad's the skeptical one, yeah. and the mom is the scared of everything. She's having freak outs. Yes. <laughs> this poor lady's hit the diarrhea period <laughs> faster than anyone else. <laughs> she needs some anxiety meds is what she needs. <laughs> oh, my God, I know. So Gil's unpacking his stuff in his room when he hears something. And then there's like this blanket on top of a chair thing. I don't know. They don't show us the whole thing. And he goes to see what it, what's under it, and he finds Stanley. And when he pulls this thing back, Stanley screams so fucking loud. Like, he's just like, ah! We got a huge laugh from Brittany over here, man. Yes. You, you got the giggles up. I love... <laughs> hate it at the same time but like whenever i go to scare somebody uh -huh. and then they scare me yeah like i don't know that just cracks me ah! up. <laughs> so like the, i don't think stanley was trying to scare him but he got scared i don't know it was just yeah, funny yeah. to me anyway so stanley says he was just there for a nap because his room is creepy so you're just sleeping underneath the thing in his chair in somebody else's room he's with got, no fucking he's got pants? No pants on. He's got no, no pants, pants on. This dude has to be in underwear throughout most of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> so they sit down to talk and Stanley is talking about a woman that works there and they have a complicated romantic relationship. 
uh, okay. <laughs> it sounds like Stanley likes her and she doesn't really. <laughs> yeah, she ain't feeling it. We ain't returning, the, the, you know. Uh, and Stanley tells Gil that she knows the possessed guest that was there, even though she says she doesn't. Mm-hmm. Bum, bum, bum. Da, da, da. Well, then she walks in. Um, her name is Maria, and she cleans up the room as, rooms at the ranch, and she has an eye patch. I I got I, I love uh, like I said, Brittany Ortez who plays Maria. She has this like kind of badass Michelle Rodriguez thing going. Oh on. yeah, she's a badass, and she's, she's kind cool of mean. Shit. She's kind of mean to Stanley, <laughs> and I think Stanley really gets off on that. I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think this is one of those things where it's yeah. like I just love a mean lady. <laughs> Okay, you. Yeah, this is me, you know? <laughs> like, the quickest way to my heart is to insult me, you guys. I find it a personal challenge. I'm- <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm so mean to him. And then you're like, let's fuck. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then I fuck the demons out of you. <laughs> is that the goal? Well, yeah, I'm trying to get the fucking demon out. He's in there. and just can't get him out. Just- well, you got to fuck me some more then. All right. Podcast over. <laughs> we just lost all our subscribers because we keep talking about shitting and fucking this whole fucking episode. Wow. Are we teenagers? I think what? so. I think so. Well, it's trauma month, you know? <laughs> you gotta, yeah. Go with it. Now, like I said earlier, you know, you'd think that just because this is part of a TV show that Robert Rodriguez is doing, that they'd have all the help in the world, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, <laughs> again, no, no. He just threw him in there, and the and I think uh, that really goes towards the biggest rule you should go into when you make movies is that no one else is going to shoot your flick but you. Right. You have to make the movie. You know, you <laughs> have to fucking do this. You know, and I think that's what I think that's the biggest challenge that freaks a lot of indie film. You know, these people who are wanting to be filmmakers, which. You know, if you're just sitting around talking about filmmaking and you're not actually doing it, that's when you're an aspiring filmmaker to me. Right. Like, I'm an aspiring filmmaker. I haven't done anything yet. (laughs) So, so, but filmmakers are the ones out there shooting. So keep that in mind. You know, don't call somebody who's making movies aspiring. Let's, no, they're doing it. They're actually doing it. They're actually fucking doing it. (laughs) But anyway, anyway. But, uh, so like I said, like... This was hard. Josh had a shit ton of issues he had to face down. One such instance was I, I, another TV crew came in and started filming on their set and started tearing things down. So you had like hammers and trucks backing up and moving and shit like that, just wreaking havoc on a shoot because oh, you're trying to shoot no. a movie and you're catching all this shit on the sound. That's not good. Oh, plus, no. plus he ran into, you know, uh, actors are not remembering their dialogue. Like, I think that's another thing that nobody really considers when in, when it's about movies uh-huh. and how hard they are to make. Like, no one considers the parts where you have to fucking, you might have to do like 20 takes of something just right. because somebody's just having a hard time or you're having a bad day. Maybe you got to shoot over and over again. But also, you're working on schedule and a tight budget. <laughs> yeah. You know, time is money when you're making movies. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. And you're wasting daylight. So, stress. A lot of stress. A lot of stress on these dudes. Yeah. Plus, man, you know, making making a movie is a lot of fun, but no one, just no one considers the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into putting out some fucking art. Oh, yeah. I think that's why, that's why I always say it's really hard to really dig at these, like, indie movies, these real low budget movies, because you know how hard of they're work they, they did their fucking best yeah. maybe there's some stuff that doesn't work in it but it, give them a break <laughs> right <laughs> that's why i don't like digging into their movies that's just it's wrong right but, uh, but you know big hollywood movies i'll fucking hate on those all the goddamn day you had all this money you and all this hundred million time. dollars you had a hundred million dollars <laughs> all you had to do was make a good movie and you failed <laughs> that's not good <laughs> like, that's not good at all but, you know, back on that aspiring thing, to stop calling people who are making movies aspiring filmmakers. Because to me, like, if you're in the shit and you're getting your hands dirty and stuff, you're a filmmaker. Right. That's just all there is to it. Uh, so Gil goes to talk to mom and she says that she is freaked out about all of this. And he says that he understands because one time he saw a man rip off his own genitals and eat them. Because he was possessed by a demon. <laughs> like how he had I to add that. Don't you know? know how that's gonna make her feel better. I know. 
Right? I don't know if you should talk about the guy who ripped his own genitals off. Man, that's fucked up, dude. That's fucked up. If a demon possesses me, can we just do some spit and pea soup or something? Do we have to rip my own genitals off? I don't know. Would you feel it, though? Uh, I think you would. Like Afterwards? I feel like you would. Uh, well, you're, you're obviously in that body somewhere. So now you're just, man, that would suck because you're just watching it all happen. You're like, no, not the dick. Not the dick. Oh, you ripped. <sighs> I liked that. <laughs> well, now you just just take me to hell because I'm just done. <laughs> now you've ripped off my dick. I don't know. What am I going to do now? What the fuck? What, what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Nobody can fuck the just, demons out of yeah, me Yeah, just, get, just <laughs> fucking take me. Just take me now, sweet, sweet Satan. <laughs> oh, my God. She then tells Gil that they have the stuff that the possessed guest brought with him. And so he goes to check it all out. Mm -hmm. And all he really finds is that this man was a photographer. And he finds the card and we see that it says like photography, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I have a question about that. Okay. Because this is something I would do. Okay. If I had a friend, a close friend, and they were like, say, a photographer or whatever. Okay. And they had a business card. I would totally use this to promote my friend's business. Like, oh, are you like thinking use, like maybe somebody, somebody Josh knew was a? Yeah, writer? I could be. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I just think that would that's be really cool. Point. Yeah, that's a good point. I just think it's a good idea. Like, I mean, free do promotion. that a lot. Yeah, promote your friend's shit in your movies, and might as well. Right? Then they might be in the movie. I think that's another thing that like a lot of people like forget. When you're when you're doing movies, a lot of people get this self entitlement thing going on that I think is a little misguided, you know, because they're like, well, if I'm doing it, then I should be getting ahead. It's like to me, there's always like two parts of when you're trying to get your film seen mm -hmm. and stuff like making movies is one thing, you know, uh, doing the shit and making them film. That's that's one thing. But also you kind of got to know some people. Right. Like that's one of the things that I was talking to you about. I was like, well. I've kind of gotten to know people at trauma. So I think that's where I would go through. Right. Like if I wanted to get my film seen by more people, you know, I would go through that. It, it's definitely about getting to know people, you know, right. make friends. Don't be a reclusive fucker in your fucking like oh. basement making movies. Are you talking to yourself? A little bit, but <laughs> you know, but all, all these people live in other States. So I, I have to go through Twitter. I can, nobody in Oklahoma is going to help me. <laughs> You think anyone in Oklahoma is going to make my 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 devil rape movie? I don't know. I don't I know. Tell. The, 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 I, true. True. <laughs> but Twitter's a good way to do it. It is. Yeah, account. get to know people and, yeah. and and make actual friendships. Right. Don't do this thing where you're just doing that weird business thing. You know, like where I can tell you're you're thinking I'm getting ahead so now you're just befriending me. Right. Don't do that. Actually make friends because you never know like somebody might come through when you really need them. Right. That and if you're nice people will be nice to you. Right. Be a nice person. Sorry. Yeah, that that's really <laughs> that's another big thing. Just be a fucking nice person. Right. You're not Yeah. Oh, that's why I didn't like Never mind. You're not Stanley fucking Kubrick. <laughs> you know, you don't get, you don't have the sway to be a dick yet. No. I've always said that. Like you got, I see this all the fucking time in the horror community is that the biggest part. You see these directors come out with this movie that's it's pretty, in, it's kind of good. And you're like, oh, that guy's got a kind of a future and stuff. Maybe this movie isn't the best, but he'll go on to make something really good. Mm -hmm. You see this all the time. They, they turn around and they start attacking people. Because of little things, like maybe somebody does something that's like kind of weird and kind of like not agreeing with what they believe in. And so they attack that person. That person ends up being the, the fucking head guy at Fangoria magazine. Right. What are you doing? Right. Like, don't attack him. Like, don't attack anybody. I you don't say anybody. <laughs> that's the thing. These people make a movie and they get this big fucking ego about them that they think they have this sway to just be a dick to everybody. It's like, you're not there yet. You know who gets to be a dick? Steven Spielberg. Oh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Steven Spielberg can be a dick all the fucking live long day. Right. Because he's gotten the sway. He's up there in the higher ranks. <laughs> right. You made a movie with paper dolls. <laughs> I'm talking about someone in specific, but I'm not naming names because that's oh. me. But <laughs> you made a fucking paper doll movie. You don't have the big uh, fucking Spielberg dick. Okay. Stop it. Stop being dicks. Okay. 
Okay, calm down. Sorry. Calm I just down. it pisses me off cuz you see they have so much creativity but they waste it because they're an asshole. Right. I understand. Anyway, so Sorry. let's get off of that first. <laughs> let's get off. Have a breather. Josh okay. Stifter is not an asshole. No. <laughs> no. So later that night when everyone is asleep, the demons start fucking with people and everyone is freaking out except Gil, who sound the fuck asleep through everything. Bed shaking, (laughs) wall shaking, things falling dead asleep. This would fucking be me. It would be you. This would be me. It would be. Like, uh, you asked me today, we came home and you were like, why did you lock all the doors last night? And I was like, because I was sleeping and nobody was home. I was like, I sleep so hard. That's at the time to rob us. Like you could just come in. I'd still be asleep. You could just take the, I'd wake up in the fucking woods in a, in a sleeping bag. They just took the entire house brick by brick. It's just all gone. You would not even know. No. So I'd no. sleep right through a demon. Like that's the thing. That's the thing. Like I always said, like if, if I get challenged to spend the night in a haunted house, you know, that's always the start of a horror movie. Right. You go to spend the night in a haunted house to win some money. You're going to die by morning. But if I fall asleep <laughs> and I just sleep not through yet. it, what's going to happen? Are they going to smother me? That seems a little not great. They, I think they'd want the challenge. So they'd just be trying to wake me up the whole time. Just woo, 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 fucking woo. What the hell? I'm rattling chains. I'm making the walls bleed. It's so fucking true, man. <laughs> How many times have I walked in this house? You've been dead asleep. Just dead asleep. And you don't even move most of the time. And if you do move, you just turn over because you're grumpy. <laughs> I'm grumpy. You're grumpy when you sleep. It's like a bear. Yes. <laughs> I made a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you're so fucking grumpy. And um, sometimes I like wake you up a uh-huh. little bit. I'm like, can you move over? Because you're laying on my side of the bed. <laughs> and you're like, Meh. So I definitely, I definitely sleep right through a demon attack. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So the next morning, he's all refreshed, and everybody, <laughs> everybody is not. <laughs> they are just cranky as fuck. But he tells them that the fact that the demon has actually possessed anyone, except for the the guest before, yeah, um, shows him that this demon is weaker than what he lets on. It's just fucking with them. Yeah, yeah. But not fucking in them. <laughs> Wait, that's not what I meant. (laughs) It's not what I meant. (laughs) I I always wonder, like, how can you tell, like, if it's a demon, poltergeist, or just a ghost, right? I don't know. You ever wondered that? Like, what? How do you tell? I'm sure there's rules, but does the demon, like, because I I, can a poltergeist possess people? I heard poltergeists can possess people. Is that a thing? I feel like they could do that. I thought poltergeists were like. Aren't they malevolent ghosts or something? I don't know what that means. I don't know. There's so many ghost rules. I thought poltergeists were like things that get possessed. I thought they were just angry. Uh, I don't know. I thought they were just angry ghosts. Like it's a me as a ghost. You know, I'd be a poltergeist because I'm just mad. I don't know. My phone's dead or I'd Google it. But. <laughs> I don't know. Now this is something for later. To, I do. Shoot listen. the shit. Shoot the shit this Friday. <laughs> okay. So Gil goes to start his work for the day and he has this tiny little crank camera. Again, I love the old school technology he just pulls out. Yes. Like oh, like earlier with the fucking cartoon he showed him. It was on a VHS tape. Right. Like just that kind of stuff. I don't know why that that makes it so fun. <laughs> it's quirky. He's it's so quirky. funny. Yeah. Well, he ends up scaring... Uh, the mom and then he sees Stanley walking around with a chainsaw <laughs> why does Stanley have a chainsaw not a good idea <laughs> in my I opinion I just love it because like he's using a, uh, an effect on this thing to where it looks like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah back in the day so it's yeah. obvious <laughs> he just comes out with a fucking chainsaw randomly I think actually the night before why did I leave this out um the, the the night before before bed or whatever, uh-huh. Stanley sees Gil and he, he Gil's going into his room or whatever. And Stanley's like, I, I got to do some work. Something about the ranch never sleeps or something like that. Yeah. And he just has this fucking chainsaw. <laughs> and then he was like, uh, Gil was like, OK, good night. And he was like, I got to go. I got to go. What? And you, 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 you think throughout this movie that maybe uh, Stanley is maybe possessed. Yeah. Like, then, yeah. Nope, nope, he's no. just Stanley. 
He's just weird. <laughs> so Gil interviews Maria for a moment and asks her if she is interested in learning more about the Lord. And she basically just says no. She's like, I've had a lot of time with him and I'm not for it. And you know, I'm not, uh, you listeners of the show will know this. I'm an atheist and stuff like that. Typically, this kind of stuff kind of bugs me when it's in a movie, uh -huh. just a little bit when it's overtly, but he, he does a good job. It's not overtly. So it's just, it's just part of this character, which is perfectly fine. But I find these moments kind of like, it has some heart to it. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. like these moments, there's a moment later when they're sitting, you know, discussing things, uh, religion and stuff. I, mm -hmm. I felt like it just feels like this movie has a ton of heart to it. Right. Though. And I didn't put that in my notes um, because you just got to watch this movie. He really does. You got to feel the feelings while you're watching this. Yeah. Movie. <laughs> like we said, it, it is a cool balance of everything. Yeah. So later on, Gil is uh, taking a shot. And Stanley just walks in. She's like, how's the water treating you? I can, Gil's like, uh, it's fine. What? The He's fuck? like, I'm trying to take a shower. Can you leave me alone? And Stanley walks out and just leaves the door open. So when Gil gets out of the shower, there's something weird running around the room. And then there is this, uh, there's this bear stuffed animal that we kind of been seeing like in the background of these rooms and stuff. Yeah. And I didn't think much about it. I, I love how he establishes the bear already. Yeah. Like, cause like if this bear just come out of nowhere, you're like, where the fuck does this bear come from? Right. But he does. He, he, he puts it in the background of shots and right. stuff like that, which is really cool. He goes up to this bear <laughs> and it just like shits on Gil's face and then attacks him. Like it's possessed. Yeah. Just fucking attacks I, him. I love the gross humor. Yes. Like, I love <laughs> this. Uh, so Gil ends up wrestling around. Uh, with this attack bear and he, he gets it outside and then he just shoots the fuck out of it and i love this because the bear like goes flying and its guts like fall out oh the, you know the, we didn't even talk about it the special effects is really cool like the visual effects are cool too the yeah. animation and stuff but but the blood and stuff like that looks great oh yeah it's awesome well, Stanley sees this whole thing happen and he's like, what did he say? He was like, oh, cool or something like that. And he's like, I'll clean it up. I got this. I'm, I'm going to clean it up. But why does he char start the chainsaw? I, I don't. He was like, I'll clean it up and starts the chainsaw. Ah. What's the chainsaw going to do? Well, you got to cut this bear into pieces at this point. Bury him in the backyard. The beard's guts are all over the ground. Dude, really is. This thing looks like roadkill by the end of it. Oh, yeah. I gotta say, like, th that's, I don't know, man. It's just so fucking cool. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it's really funny to see this six, seven dude wrestling around with a stuffed animal bear. <laughs> man, that's great. <laughs> I love it when they do this in movies where they like the fucking little inanimate object. It's like <laughs> they're having to struggle against it. That's such a thing. That's a thing I never bought in those fucking Chucky movies. I never could get around that. Like, that's the one thing that always <laughs> cracks me up about those movies. Is, uh, that's probably why Chucky never frightened me, even as a kid. Like, because you're just like, it would just kick him. Right. Like, <laughs> right. He's this big. <laughs> just beat him up. I wonder how many bears he had to buy for this. Like, <laughs> he sends he sends someone to the store. Okay, I need six of these bears. <laughs> no, I need six stuffed animals. Just pick one. I need bears. I, I gotta, need something yeah. like. And that, that's another thing that shows like how like fucking created this guy is because like who would come up with this? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like where would you, you go to kill or attack bear like in, a, in an exorcist movie? So everyone kind of has a meaning and the mom thinks that the bear almost killed Gil and Gil says everything's fine. Um, but he's still trying to figure out what kind of demon the, they're dealing with. And he says everyone needs to be normal. And he wants to know what they normally do on a Tuesday night. And Stanley gets so fucking excited. And he was like, it's dance party night. <laughs> so the mom fires at the record player. And Gil encourages Stanley to ask Maria to dance. And she's like, okay. But if you try anything, I'm cutting your dick off. <laughs> and he's like, okay. It's just so weird. This is so weird because like all these characters don't seem like they belong on this ranch. Right. They are so different. <laughs> <laughs> and you're telling me that every Tuesday they have a dance party. <laughs> For their guests. That's what they do. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you got to. Right? I guess. That's true. 
dance party. <laughs> So all their, as they're dancing and stuff, the mm. record starts to talk and it's like possessed. And Stanley just goes over and like starts stomping out the records. And the mom's like, not my records. She does this so many times. Yes. Not my records. And like, not my phone. <laughs> not my, my Bible. Bible. <laughs> Repeating gags, man. That's what I like. Yeah. Uh, so Maria decides that her and Stanley need to go through Gil's things. Uh, because Maria thinks that Gil, that Gil knew the voice on the recorder, and she says that he's lying about everything. So they find Gil's bullets that say one way ticket, um, and they have holy water in them. We saw this in the beginning when he was like suiting up or whatever. Yeah, that's what that's, I'm calling it. I, you know, that's another thing. It's like you don't see like a a priest like shooting the holy water bullets into fucking <laughs> right. people. Like that is something that's sorely missing from all these exorcist things. Like if oh yeah, if I was watching an exorcism movie, like if this fucking exorcist reboot just ends with like a, the fucking dude just pumping some lead into this fucking possessed person, <laughs> that is a that is an immediate like rating boost for oh, me. Yes. You're getting to four stars out of five. <laughs> oh, so Stanley's upset that they went through his stuff because he's like, this is just not right. He's a guest and he's a priest. <laughs> well, Maria says that he probably works for the devil. And then she takes a hit off of a pipe. She's smoking weed or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And Stanley's just staring at her. So she she's acts like she's possessed. And this freaks Stanley out. He's like, oh no. <laughs> And she's like, you're a pussy. <laughs> and he's like, okay, okay. Well, then Gil shows up and he scares both of them. <laughs> They're both like, ah. I don't know. I like the reverse know, scares. It's good shit. Oh, yeah. You you have a thing for that. Yeah? I Just do. like somebody <laughs> fucking scaring somebody else and them getting scared. I love, well, I love scaring people. Now, I don't like to get scared. I know. You can't be hypocritical of that. I know. And it's just my fight or flight's just like. <gasps> Dude, you leap. I know. I've scared you and you hop up to my height and you are like, what, 5'2"? Yeah. And you like five through the fucking ceiling every time I scare you. And it's so easy to scare you. Yes. It is so fucking easy. My fight or flight's like. Ah! I could literally be standing right there and just jump at you. And you'd be like. Ah! <laughs> Like, it's like so, you're like a fly. It's it's not hard at all. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh. Anyway. There, I, w I will say, you know, this might sound mean, but there is nothing more enjoyable than scaring a toddler. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Yes. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. <laughs> is this child abuse? No. Is this child abuse? No, we're, my we're Lord. building the character. Okay. My Lord. So when you walk through our house, like uh -huh. our room's the garage. You go through the laundry room, go through the kitchen. Well, the living room is like when you walk into the living room from the kitchen, yeah. you're, if you're in the living room, your back is facing the kitchen. So you're walking up on people in the living room and every time like every day when the kids are in there watching tv they're being quiet or whatever i'll be like Whoa! and they're like ah! <laughs> and so the easy. six year old's like stop scaring stop me stop scaring me it's not nice <laughs> It's pretty fucking hilarious it is. to me and then the five-year-old he likes to do this thing i call it the sneak yeah and i'll be like sneak Sneak, sneak, and he kind of crouches down and he acts like he's gonna scare someone. We can see it. We, You're the not other hiding. person, though. No. You gotta no. hide a little better, son. He's like, not good at that. Oh, man. <laughs> but you know what? He is good about hiding, like, um, behind the shelf right here. Yeah, yeah. And he will get you. Oh, he'll get you. Because yeah. you cannot see, see him behind he's the, the one, shelf. He's the one we've corrupted. Oh, yeah. Like, he loves oh, yeah. horror movies. Okay. Uh, so there's a spider in the bathtub today. He's freaking the fuck out. We get the spider out of the bathtub. He refuses to get in the bathtub. I have to hold him down in the bathtub to give him a bath. Yeah. He, he, he'll he watch fucking Hellraiser. I know. But a fucking spider or like an ant. An ant. An ant Ants will are the scare worst. the shit out of him. Ants are the worst. And it, 
uh, so he's freaking out or whatever. And I was like, you can never watch a scary movie again if you can't take a fucking bath. <laughs> Not even a fucking spider in here. I remember I asked him one day, I was like, why are you so scared of ants? Yeah. They crawl and they touch you. And I was like, I mean, well, I, I can't argue with you. I understand your reasoning, but. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that cat is more scary than that fucking That's ant. That's true, yeah. Oh, and then the fucking Oh, I wanted to back him, him, the preteen. He's like, oh well, ants aren't going to bite you except for like maybe the red ones. I was like, shut, shut the up. Fuck do up. not introduce the bitey ants. <laughs> Don't do this. <laughs> Because then he's going to think all the ants are biting yes. the ants. Oh, God. I was like, if you don't get out of this bathroom right now. <laughs> <laughs> and all of this while I was going to the bathroom. Like, I was going to the bathroom and all of this. Oh, happened. man. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> Rant. <laughs> so, um, Gil sees Maria's artwork on the walls and he says it's pretty cool. She's really good at drawing. Yeah. She says it's from her dreams. And then Stanley starts talking about how <laughs> he has a dream that he's naked and his hands are made of wool socks and that he can't hide his penis because of the socks. And then his penis gets itchy be because of the socks. <laughs> he, starts, oh, fuck. he starts crying. Oh, fuck. He <laughs> says he doesn't know what to do about it. Oh my god. If any line in this movie was fucking uh what is that impromptu like like you made up improv? Yeah, improv or uh -huh. whatever. I think it's this one. Man. This is hilarious. I'm telling you, this guy's awesome. Like I said, oh, he like yeah. just elevates everything. Every scene he's fucking in, he brings it to the next level. Oh yeah. And just this fucking dream shit just comes out of fucking left field. If Marie's like drawing pictures about like fucking demons and shit and Stanley's Stanley's having, having issues with his penis God damn that's funny <laughs> And you could understand why the fucking Josh just cracking up throughout this entire Fucking oh movie. yeah oh yeah I, I wouldn't be able to hold it in man it'd be so Rough people would probably start getting Pissed at me as the director <laughs> Stop <laughs> laughing stop it Well it's funny You wrote it <laughs> well no but It's funny It's funny <laughs> So then Gil finds a picture of Maria without her eye patch and her eye is all fucked up. Which this is your first clue. I got to say, I got to say, you know, to have a disability, I think I, I'd go with the eye patch. That just makes you look so much more cooler. Oh, yeah. I feel like an, I, I feel like I just need to start wearing an eye patch. Think about how cool I look. <laughs> I'm thinking... I'd get in trouble, but I'd look really cool. I don't know that you'd get in trouble, but I'm thinking that um, you specifically should not wear an eye patch because you're already blind. <laughs> I do have to wear prescription lenses. Very heavy prescription lenses. And I'm so... already... You're right. I'd be spinning. I'd either be walking in circles or running into things. I would not trust your driving. <laughs> You just take the eye patch off while you're driving. Oh, shit. <laughs> People are like, oh, you don't need the eye patch? Nope. Why is he wearing an eye patch? Just to look. I, it looks cool. <laughs> Isn't it cool? Not if you don't need it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, you know what? You wouldn't like to wear an eye patch because a lot of people would ask you a lot of questions. Oh, yeah. And you don't like right. when people talk to you. You're right. <laughs> I don't like being approached. No. So Gil asks Maria what she knew about the possessed guests, and she says nothing because he didn't talk to anyone while he was there. Then they hear something from inside, and they find a Bible on the ground. Turn to Revelations, talking about the angel of the bottomless pit. Bum, 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 bum. Satan. Satan. <laughs> so Gil hears a phone ringing, and he goes to pick it up. Well, the, there's a demon voice on the other end, and it says, uh, please hold for a very important call. I would have hung up. Okay, we don't do spam around here, okay? My thing, <laughs> <laughs> this coming up probably got the biggest fucking laugh out of me. Because through this whole movie, <laughs> you've been hearing, like, the satanic voices that's been coming through things. Yeah. It's like, rrr, rrr, you know what I mean? Like, you're <laughs> normally what you would expect a demon to sound like. Yeah. And then Satan calls Gil. <laughs> And Satan sounds like a fucking AT&T operator. <laughs> hey there, Gil. 
This is Satan. Hey, it's Satan here. All right, listen. <laughs> he's well. Satan says that he wants to work things out and work together on everything. And then the phone starts blaring music and crawling away, and Tail it, it like crawls outside and Gil shoots it. And I want to say in the head, but phones don't have heads. I, so it I looks like he sh- if if he shot this phone anywhere, I think it's the head. Right, right. right. It starts gushing blood. <laughs> right, and then the mom, not my phone. <laughs> this mom's just having a bad time, oh, man. Right. But I uh, see again, just the inventiveness. Like, we, who would have thought of a fucking killer phone? Right. <laughs> oh man. With just the thought of though. Of Satan having normal voice is probably the funniest fucking thing ever. I bet he does. Like you think so? If he's real, yeah. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. Could you imagine finding out that one, religion is real. <laughs> Two, hell is real. <laughs> all in the same day. <laughs> all in the same day after you die. And then you end up, you know, oh no. Oh no, it's all real. I'm going to the lake of fire. Here I am. Oh God, here's Satan. Well, hi there. <laughs> Welcome to hell. I'm Satan, as you can see by the horns. <laughs> Why does he sound like that? Why does he sound like a black grandma? <laughs> <laughs> it took you a second. To oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Now I'm seeing like Tyler Perry as Satan. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm Satan. How are you today? We're lining up your torture right over here. <laughs> And if you look over here, you look over here. There's a lava pit. My my bet is you get down to hell, and it's not so bad. Because if everyone they say is going to hell goes to hell, that sounds like a cool place. It's like you get down there, Satan's like, "Well, hello. <laughs> we got Jimi Hendrix performing at noon. <laughs> That'd be cool. Jim Morrison's over there waving his wiener. What?" <laughs> Okay. Bob Saget's performing tonight. See, like, hell sounds like a good place. (laughs) Hell sounds like where you want to go. And really, I mean, even with the heat, what is it like? You vacationing in in, in the Bahamas? That wouldn't be so bad. You just wear shorts all the time. I bet you hell's good. Like, I'm just saying, I bet you hell's real. And we get there, we find out that's the place you want to be. Right. Because they're probably like, oh, no, no, man. We have ice water down here. I don't know what that is. That's fucking crazy. It's just a little warm. It's just just warm, warm all year. It's <laughs> warm. There's no cold. It's just warm all year. It's like, well, that's not so bad. <laughs> like, yeah, we have cool play. Look, look, we got bar. We got casinos. We got the fuck palace. You can go Ooh. to the fuck palace. <laughs> nice. Nice. Now I want to hear that. Welcome to the fuck palace. <laughs> Why do I sound like Bootsy Collins? I don't know, but why do I keep thinking? <laughs> but why, when you talk, All right, baby. When you talk like that, uh-huh. what I'm imagining, and it's the weirdest thing ever, is the genie from Aladdin. That's weird. But like red. What, the red genie from Aladdin's yeah. down there? Yeah. That'd be all right. That's, That's a the Satan. devil. That's a devil. That's a Satan. 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 What the fuck? Satan. My, my words. That's, my fun. Name That's is Satan. Satan, baby. <laughs> Anyway, back <laughs> is to, Bootsy Collins the devil? <laughs> back to our movie. I'm so sorry. So Gil is watching one of his old Christmas videos when the dad walks in and asks him about it. He says about a year after this, his brother died. And that was the first demon that he had ever encountered. So the dad wants to know how long all of this is going to take. And Gil tells him to have patience. And then the dad tells him a joke. So here's the joke. Okay. Okay, Why does no one die a virgin? Okay, why? Because we all get fucked in the end. See, that's a good joke. It is a good (laughs) joke. It's a pretty good joke. It's true. It is very true. Oh, that is true, man. When we get down to Bootsy Collins, it's going to be real (laughs) fair. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it's nighttime now and Gil is sleeping and Stanley comes in in just his underwear and starts attacking Gil. So the next day, Gil has a nosebleed. Stanley apologizes and says that he has night terrors. But instead, uh, instead he terrorizes other people instead of the night terrorizing him. Which I love how he shows up at this fucking... 
room because again you're like oh this guy's fucking possessed yeah this guy's possessed because yes. he shows up in his fucking whitey tidies again <laughs> yes. to try to strangle gill <laughs> so you're like is he possessed or is he sleepwalking what's happening <laughs> Well, then Maria asked Stanley if he's trying to go to hell. And now he's freaked out that Gil's just going to send him to hell. He's like, please don't send me to hell, sir. Do the, pri- do the priests have that authority? Can they just, the preachers or priests or whatever, they can, can they just send you to hell? Is that a thing? I don't Like, think they so. can damn you to hell, right? Yeah. That's a thing. Like, I damn you to hell? Yeah. Do you have to have authority to do that? Like, can I just damn someone to hell? I don't think so. That's not a thing, right? No, no you got. I don't a- think you ate the body of Christ, drank the blood, or whatever to be able to do that. So, man, and why is it not a cannibalistic <laughs> cult? Like, what? We're eating the body, yeah, and drinking the blood, eh? Yeah. Nobody's weirded out. I don't know. I was like eight years old, drinking wine and eating wafers. So I, I don't. Know. I will tell you. I nearly got kicked out of a church for that. What? Uh, yeah, because is the Eucharist? Because I went to a, uh, I went to a uh, uh, Catholic um, daycare or something. Oh yeah. Uh, when I was younger, boy, those nuns were mad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they were mad about, but they were mad. <laughs> don't you dare leave out of the sermon to go fucking pee because that was <laughs> don't you dare have a potty break <laughs> oh, no. you better hold that piss and listen to the lord <laughs> but like so yeah that stuff and i remember when they explained it what it was like the body of christ and this is his blood i got freaked out <laughs> i was freaked out yeah i back. was like oh my god God, they're making us eat this guy's skin <laughs> and this is blood i don't want to be here i don't want to be here <laughs> I don't want to be here. Because you try, you try explaining symbolism to a four-year-old, just, or no, I think I was five. But a five-year-old, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to eat this guy. I don't know him. I can imagine your dad picking you up and being like, "You're dumb, dude." I'm telling you, Catholic Church is scary as fuck when you're oh, that yeah. age. Oh, you yeah. got a dude hanging from a cross, looking at y'all, scary. They always underlight it too, so it's yeah. even scarier. And then they're telling you to eat this dude's skin and blood, and you're like, "How old is it?" First of all, second of all, <laughs> like I don't think this blood's very fresh. I could get sick. <laughs> That's not what you want. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> so then we see another little video that Gil has made, and he, uh, he thinks that Maria is the link to all of this, but he can't figure it out. Then he goes to talk to Maria and she's crying and but then the video cuts so we don't get to see why she's crying. Yeah. Then we see him go outside and smoke because he's trying to figure this all out and he's stressed, okay? A priest got to smoke sometimes, okay? <laughs> but I, I again, I do like how he treats Father Gill in this movie. Like I like how he's not like he's not super buttoned up. Right. Like right. th- that makes him much more interesting than just like, cause you think about all these exorcism movies again, you know, back on these movies, but the priests are the most non-interesting part of the movie. And I know, I know a lot of people are like, but, but the exorcist, uh, father Marion, it's, I just, I, those were the most boring right. parts of that movie. Oh yeah. The, the fucking captain Howdy was the, more, <laughs> was the more interesting part. Reagan telling him like your mother sucks cocks in hell. That was the stuff that you remember. <laughs> right. You don't tend to like remember how cool Father Marion was. <laughs> Cause he wasn't. <laughs> no. So like when you do this, like it makes this priest character stick out so much more. Oh yeah. And it I don't know. It's it's very refreshing. It Give is. Give me more <laughs> more cool priests. Right. Well, Maria ends up scaring him. And they sit down to talk a little bit and then they go for a ride and they end up sp- um, spending all day and in, into the night together and they're dancing and they're having a good time. I like this part of the movie. It feels like a good break. <sighs> what's wrong? It's a good break, but like, what's up? What's up? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just, it's a weird to me, almost like they're trying to make a love story. I think so. I think that, I think there's like a connection between these two. Like, but, yeah. but at the same time, I don't think, you know, Josh Stifter is going to have these two have sex on camera or, or like, isn't going to like make this too overtly a love story because That's I don't think true. Father Gill's that kind of person. I can, can priests, can priests have lovers? Oh, uh, good point. 
I think can they, they be I think they can now, you know, because of all the child rape. Oh my god. No, I'm not even joking. I, know I think you're they not. I think they had to allow them to get married because they were fucking too many kids. That's fucked not up. the father Gill. His father Gill's one of the good ones. Right. <laughs> He's the good ex. He's one of the good ones. Yeah, there yeah. you go. It's in the title. Right. So Maria asks Gill what all of this means, like life. And he says the internal no, sorry. He says the eternal life already knows the outcome, so the day to day doesn't actually matter. So she challenges him to write down the science of faith. So he writes on a piece of paper and says, this is the meaning of her life. We don't get to see what's on this piece of paper. Uh And she was like, so this is the meaning of life. And he's like, this is the meaning of your life. And he keeps pointing that out. This is the meaning of your life. Yeah. So they talk about faith a bit. And then she starts to talk about the possessed man. And... Uh, as she's talking about him, her eye starts to bleed. Which you know, I, 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 I could, I could, like, I could see people saying that, like, this kind of stuff stops the movie dead. But I don't know, like, because it feels like with this stuff added, like, I don't know these. Uh, we get a more of an even more depth to this film. Oh yeah, like I like this. Uh, these scenes here where they're dancing and stuff, taking a break from fucking all this fucking possession shit. And and then you get into this discussion, which definitely feels like a discussion that's very respectful of both ends of the spectrum of religion. Like he's not overtly like making fun of like uh, the religious and he's not really like discounting those who are atheists and stuff either. It's just a nice intellectual conversation they sit down and have. I know. And I like that. Yeah. Which is something like not a lot of people can fucking sit down and do. Right. Not saying Maria is atheist. Not saying that. It's just as an atheist watching the scene, like, that's not, you know, it's not like, oh, God, this is dumb. But I feel like she represents a major, like, um, majority of people Mm -hmm. that are questioning. Yeah, good idea, good idea. Questioning faith. And um, so she just wants answers without, uh, she's not being judgmental or anything like that she's just like i have these questions which is nice it kind of makes you want that on both sides like in everyday life you know people to be like nice to each other just sit down conversations (laughs) which not not that that's what this scene is kind of doing they're just more trying to understand each other as characters but like i i just really appreciate this even though it does kind of like crawl the movie to a stop there for a second but i don't feel like it does well i think because you kind of need that Right. I mean, think about that. Like, we're having a fun ride, but it's like we need something to take a minute. Oh, right. Like, and, and I think this these scenes really do that. And I, I love the car dance scene. That is, yes. that is, I don't know why that sticks out to me as the scene, like, but it does for some reason. Well, we needed this a little bit, too, because we needed to see the softer side of Maria. Right, right. Because this whole movie she spends being a badass. Right. And then here at the end, like, you know, cause, well, because you got to feel some kind of sympathy for this character when we get into what we're about to get into. It a right. Bit. So later that night, Gil hears something and then he sees a Bible on the floor. When he goes to pick it up, it's possessed and attacks him and bites his arm. So then Gil pulls a cross off the wall and stabs the book with it. Man, I- so when you when I told you you're going to watch this movie, did you think you were going to see somebody stab a fucking uh, uh, a holy Bible with googly eyes? <laughs> no, not one time did I ever think that ever. Well, I, in me movie. either. When you see like because when you see this movie, uh, it's called The Good Exorcist and stuff like that. So you're thinking, OK, sure, we're just parodying The Exorcist or right. something like that. We're just parodying exorcism movies. Fun, you know, or uh, this is <laughs> <laughs> this is not that that no, no it's not that at all so like i i feel bad you know for some people who might like go into this thinking it's some like skipping this because i think it's something completely different to what it is right and this is where the mom's like not my bible because her bible's dead <laughs> not my bible so then they all gather together and gil thinks the ranch is clean now <laughs> but Mar- maria freaks out and says that getting rid of a bible monster won't do anything <laughs> and then she passes out <laughs> so they hear something off into the distance and it, it is the tv and it's all staticky and it starts to talk then a cartoon starts playing saying that gill took the easy way out 
with that teenage girl and he just shot her. Yeah, so you find out there's like uh, some other shit he's having to deal with. That's right. Pro- that's kind of why he's more like down on himself. Right. And stuff like that. Because I guess he shot that girl. He, yeah, he ended her grace period. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he's battling his own demons about that. Yeah. Sad day. Maria is kind of rotting away and she says he filled her with false hope and that these monsters have followed her around all her life. She says people have tried to cure her, but they are all dead now and there's nothing he can do about it. And then she has this tentacle come out of her mouth and she starts, she, it comes out of her mouth and almost gets guilt and then goes back in and she just starts laughing maniacally. Yeah. Which is, so now you found out that uh, Maria is the source of all this shit. Right. That's going on, which is very cool. Like, <laughs> Which... I mean, obviously, it was leaning towards that. Yeah, right. Or right. Stanley, but it's Maria. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you think Stanley might be possessed through this whole thing. I don't know. I was thinking because you're like, why is he acting so weird? And then when you find <laughs> yeah. out, he's just fucking weird. <laughs> right. So Gil tells everyone that this is above his pay grade and that this evil, this is evil incarnate. And it's going to take everything that they love. This is above Padre's pay grade. <laughs> right. I want that on a shirt. This is above Pod Grace. I like that. He says they need to get the hell out of there. And the dad agrees. He's like, wait, if the priest says it, we got to go. Okay. I, I, you know, in this situation, yes. Like if I was in the middle of a demon possession and like the priest said, hey, we're getting the fuck out of Dodge. It's like, oh, okay. okay, this guy's running. We're leaving. Too. Right. Well, Stanley's upset that Gil is just going to give up on Maria like everyone else has. And Gil says that sometimes fate is a little ugly and that he didn't choose her fate, but he said fate never changes and there are fates worse than hell. And assume uh, like saying that this is worse than that. So so how would you <laughs> how would you approach a, a demon possession? Let's say I got possessed by a demon. I'm sorry you're getting the the one way ticket, bro. Dude, what if I get like, is there a nice demon? What if I get possessed by a nice demon that like straightens up my mental issues and just like, I don't know. So like Prozac? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like the demon gets in me. And it's like, oh my God, this is fucked up. I got to help this guy. <laughs> He's worse than me and I'm a demon. I, I don't know that demons are nice. Oh my gosh. Anyway, you're getting the one way ticket. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, you're just yep. going to condemn me to my fate. You're not even going to call a priest. Well, we have kids, so you can <laughs> get them out of the house first, then call the priest. <laughs> God damn, I'm taking pot shots at the I don't Lord. know. Are you going to want to be back after that? Well, it depends. Did the demon make me rip off my genitals? See, that's, uh, that's where we would go. If my dick is intact, <laughs> so that's bring me my back. judgment. Dick intact, <laughs> my bring dick me back. A- dick- <laughs> Now there's a t-shirt. <laughs> Dick and tag to bring me back. People be like, what the? I just, I need just that. Like a Frankie goes to Hollywood kind of t-shirt. <laughs> like It just says relax on those t-shirts. <laughs> Mine would say, you know, Dick and tag bring me back. <laughs> like people are just like, what the fuck <laughs> is that guy wearing? <laughs> right. He says Dick on it. Get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you said a bad word. <laughs> So Gil decides to tell Stanley that he can touch the box that he told him not to touch earlier. Yes. And he was like, yes. hey, Remember that box I told you not to touch earlier? So he opens it and it's got a gun, a Bible, and some crucifixes in it. And I saw a butt plug, but really it was just like the topper you, to you like You stopped a, dead in this movie. You were like, is that a butt plug in his? I was like, no, we're just freaks. <laughs> I have some problems apparently. No, we're just fucking freaks and we just assume everybody has a sex toy. Just at the ready. You never know when you need an emergency butt plug. Do you do you think that's for the diarrhea? It might be. Like, that's a good idea. Yeah. Like if there's so much diarrhea, you could pack a butt plug. That would be bad. What? Well, Oh, you know what you, happens? It, it might be like a cork coming off of a champagne bottle. It's well, I fucking, wasn't thinking that. The butt plug flies off and kills somebody. I that's wasn't dangerous. thinking that because if you plug one hole. Oh, well, that's where the split pea soup comes from. Oh. Del- deleted scene from The Exorcist. They pop the butt plug in there. Uh, that's so gross. I mean, they're priests. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I'm here all night. <laughs> 
so Gil makes a phone call to get some help cleaning it up in about 30 minutes. And he says that they don't hear from him to call the other priests. Then he takes the gun and tells Stanley to shoot him clean between the eyes. But he's because he's going to hell until the demons push him back out. Stanley doesn't give this much of a second thought. And he just fucking okay. shoots him. Blam. And I got to say, like. One of the uh, the props of this fucking movie, man, that 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 headshot looks great. Oh yeah, man, that looks good. Whew. Oh, I'm so used to seeing so many CGI headshots. It's just it's too much for me. Oh yeah, like so, like uh, just appreciate squib work. You know, <laughs> yes. this was pretty great. Yeah. So Gil is now in hell, and the devil says that he has sent people to hell. So that Gil has sent people to hell, so he is no better than any of them. Then he finds Maria and says a prayer thing, and they uh-huh. come back to Earth. You know, so when they're in hell here, like, I, I, you know, I like the animation on this devil. Oh, yeah. This is cool looking. Oh, yeah. Like, it really goes to show you, like, Josh Stifter knows his fucking shit about animation, and this thing looks good. Like, even though, yeah, it's cheap. I mean, what do you got to do? <laughs> you don't have right. Pixar money or anything. <laughs> we don't have Marvel money. Hey, it looks better than what mine would have been. Mine would have been, it like, certainly does. a drawn. I would have to <laughs> just have had that guy in a suit. Right. That might not have been that great. Right. <laughs> like... I don't know if that would have been as imposing. <laughs> probably not. Because I probably couldn't get anybody that tall or big. So it's probably <laughs> just like a five foot five guy. Hi, I'm the devil. <laughs> 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 in a Frankie goes to Hollywood. Trip. <laughs> anyway. Frankie says, relax. <laughs> anyway, so we're back on Earth. And. Gil's alive and Maria's alive. And then we see her like throw up this spider rat thing. What the fuck? Man, this thing goes scuttering off. Yes. It looks like I don't, like an alien. <laughs> yes, yes. So then it attacks Gil and uh, Maria bites it so that it'll run off. <laughs> What the hell? I she love... just bites one of his tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I love this thing because we get to a point where it's in this house and it's laying on the floor and it's talking and shit, but it's like obviously like a trash bag over some shit. And it <laughs> this, I didn't know that actually. This fucking this fucking thing is so fucking charming. Oh like, yeah. Like I don't <laughs> I say that all the time and I'm sure people are like, "What do you mean charming?" I don't know, man. Just some practical effects. Yeah. No matter how cheap they are, it's just always it's so awesome. Like, but do more of this. Oh yeah. Um so it looks like this big like blob octopus thing. Yeah, yeah. Cuz it's got tentacles. And uh Maria tells Stanley to go get the one-way ticket bullet. So they throw it to each other, which was really fucking cool because they all like caught it. Like That was a neat shot, man. Yes. That was pretty fucking cool. So Maria loads the gun with it and shoots him in the face and it dies. Yeah. Him, it, whatever. So it's dead. Maria and Gil are fine. Um, Gil collects his part of the demon because he's got this like picture that has like pieces of these demons in them, like in it, like a souvenir. And he says goodbye to everyone. And then he gets a phone call and he needs to head out to save a soccer team with spinning heads and pea soup. Uh, throw up. But he drives off yeah. just a little bit and then he backs up and he ends up taking Maria with him. And a few seconds later, it takes Stanley a few seconds to realize what's going on. Wait! He's like, no, wait. <laughs> so he chases the car down and they let him go too. And they drive off into the sunset. I fucking love it. Yes. You know, like I love that. <laughs> me too. But, you know, so, so to me, the good exorcist is way on its way to being a cult hit. I mean, it deserves it. Like oh, I yeah. said, you got to like a, a cross between it's something you never thought you needed a cross between like a Napoleon Dynamite type movie and the Evil Dead 2. Right. And th- this has it. And Josh has gone on to do uh, Greywood's plot. You know, he went on to do more movies. Greywood's plot, which is more horror than comedy, but it's even better. 
You know, I oh, yeah. I, I love this guy's work, uh, which brings me to a thing I say like constantly on this show. I, I love discovering these emerging artists right at the beginning. Yeah. That's why I sit down and I watch all these fucking indie movies like that are like untalked of and just fucking unheard of and shit. I'll go through Amazon and fucking watch everything <laughs> just to see if something sticks out. And sometimes you do find some shit. But like seeing someone get started right at the beginning is so cool and seeing how every project they turn out is even better than the last. So one day you can like when you see like Josh, maybe maybe he breaks out. Fuck. Who knows? Right. Maybe he's making millions of dollars one day. And then you see that and you could be like, yeah, I remember when. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You get to, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's fun because none of us in my age range got to experience John Carpenter from the first movie on. Right. You know, on into Halloween <laughs> or fucking the thing. None of us got to experience that like in my age range. So like seeing these new guys doing this, it's very cool. And it's very inspiring, man. Oh, yeah. Like, uh. It, it's an awesome feeling. And, and The Good Exorcist will be just that. I, I think this is like definitely his stepping point. Now, what, what I love about this movie is that there is so much going on here that's fun. Like, I think that's one of the things that like when people set out to do horror comedies, it's a hard thing to do because most of the time people are not good at the comedy part. Right. That's, I think, where those things falter, you know, because the horror, you can have horror elements, you know. And it'll be okay. Right. Like, so you don't necessarily have a scary movie, but if your comedy fucking fails and then you don't have scary and you don't have <laughs> funny, then what do you got? You it's got just a flop an there. amorphous yeah. blob that's not funny or scary. And it's, it's kind of a waste of time, mm -hmm. which this, uh, yeah, it's not scary, but like, I think it has so much heart and so much fucking comedy in it that it's so good. It's a fun fucking movie. Oh yeah. Uh, it, it it's a charming movie and it also has a lot of heart, which is another thing. I think throughout this movie, you just, you feel like it has a ton of warmth. Oh yeah. They're all trying the hardest. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I'm not, not trying hard. It's not hard, but like, I mean, it is hard, but not, you know what I mean? Yeah. It has a lot of heart <laughs> behind it. Like the story, there's a lot of warmth there yeah. and stuff like that. It's not a mean movie at all, No, you know, and it's, it's just fun. It's kind of refreshing. And, and yeah, like, like you said, like everybody does a, fucking fantastic oh job yeah here. and you can tell everybody gave a shit that's what i was trying to say which yeah. is honestly something that miss is missing from a lot of big budget movies like you see these movies where you're like well obviously all these people just showed up to get paid right and this is boring like whereas like and that's why i tell people do not overlook these indie films because you might find a movie here that's just fun and like you can tell people had a good time working on it and it's just <laughs> no matter its flaws that you have a good movie right. at the end of the day. Uh, like I said, the, the most biggest sin anyone can do when they're making a movie is make a boring movie. Right. If, if it bores me, I'm done. You know? Right. <laughs> like I'm, you lost me. I'm bored. That's not why I'm watching a movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to be entertained. Yeah. It, it, and so like when you see something like this, it doesn't matter the flaws. It's it's just great. Right. It's a great movie. But uh, th and the reason we started Trauma Month with this film is because of what it represents. It, it's real independent filmmaking. You know, it's a real artistry. And, and Trauma is the last truly independent film studio. So I think this goes hand in hand, even though this started out over at uh, uh, Rebel Without a Crew and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, and Troma is just the, it's the distributor to get it out to the masses, which I think is, makes it a Troma movie because of how, you know, that's hard work to try to get your film distributed. Oh, yeah. And so anybody able to make Blu-rays of your movie and get it out to everybody, that's an A+. plus. So like, oh, yeah. so definitely like they take a chance on like, all these kind of movies. I, I would Definitely tell everybody, you know, if you've made a movie and you're having a hard time getting it seen, maybe talk to Troma, you know, maybe see what, what they can do for you. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great. And um, <clears throat> and I, I love all these movies. I love Troma, especially because uh, it's not those $10 million Blumhouse movies. Right. You know, the Blumhouse movies are considered low budget now. Ugh. That's weird. There, you know, we talked about like during our Quentin Tarantino time, we talked about the the indie film boom and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Well, now it's gone on to be a ten like a million dollar industry, which is weird. You know, that so like weird. a lot of true independent stuff is right. getting lost. Right. 
And that's what we're looking at here. Real independent movies. <laughs> it's the new stuff. Uh, but, um, you know, I, and I think I prefer this. You know, I, you know, when the people like uh, Jason Blum sits there and tells you how low budget and oh, we're making indie films and stuff like that. I don't really it doesn't impact me as much as when you watch these guys who are fucking against the grain and they skirt by just because everyone has drive and a vision. Right. And they turn out some art. Right. Like those f impact me more. They're more <laughs> inspiring. Right. You know, so but, uh, you know, enough about me. Enough about me. We all know I love this movie. Uh, what did you think about The Good Exorcist from 2018? I liked it. I like a good, funny movie. Yeah? And I have a hard time with, like, dry humor sometimes when it's too much. Like, Step Brothers, too much for me. I kind of agree. I know that's, like, everybody... And is that dry humor? I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what kind of humor it is, but I don't like it. I it's understand. I understand. Much. I understand. And this has a good balance. It's nice, man. I like the jokes in this movie. Everything lands. There's not a joke that g goes over that like lands with a thud. Right. What you got to hate when you're watching a movie that's trying to be funny and it feels like it's trying too hard. And so the jokes are not landing. Right. And then you just feel bad. <laughs> like, you just oh. feel bad for everybody involved. And you're like, God, if you just had one funny guy, <laughs> like, <laughs> right. this would have been great. And um, at first with Stanley, I thought it was going to be a little weird, but they, th it's like they didn't do too much. Yeah, it's a, it's a great balance. Oh, it is for thing, sure. Which I think if anyone else would have, well, not anyone else, but you know, you got people who try this, who attempt this kind of humor and attempt this kind of movie, and mm -hmm. it just it doesn't quite feel right. It feels and like it goes one way or not the other, you know. Right. But I really liked it. I'd watch it again. And, you know, this was your first, like, real independent movie. You know, this is this thing was had a budget of $7,000. So it's – that's low independence. And Greywood's right. plot, I think, is even lower. And it's better. Oh, wow. Like, I, I mean, this is a great movie. Oh, yeah. But, like, Greywood's plot is an even better work. Like I said, you can see the progression of right. Josh right. As, he, as he gets better, as he makes more and more films. Mm -hmm. And so, like, it just I, – I love that um, – when we talk, when I watch these movies, it it very much inspires me as the aspiring filmmaker. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? As somebody who's talking about filmmaking, but isn't quite there yet. It really is inspirational. Like, because it shows you, like, you don't need a lot of money to make a movie. Right. Like, and, and, and I think that's the point that I like to get across to people who might be listening to this, who might be like me, who are, man, I want to make a movie. I just want to do that. I've always wanted to make a movie. I've always wanted to be a filmmaker. But you might get a little overcome by like, oh, man, I'm going to need budget. I'm going to need all this crew. I'm going to need all this. I'm going to all in it. Not necessarily, man. Start with a vision. Just fucking go out and do it. Right. You know, start making little videos for YouTube. You know? Uh, oh, yeah. This podcast, this podcast has been integral to me becoming more and more like, I got to get off my ass and start right. making movies again. Because right. I told you, you know, before life happened, which I wish it hadn't, but, you know, before life and mental shit happened and divorces and all sorts of dark times and suicide <laughs> attempts, before all that happened in high school, I was making movies. I was like, I was wanting to make movies and stuff like that. I made some movies with friends and stuff. I was on my way. And then, you know, life happened. Right. I completely forgot that passion, you know, but this podcast brought it back up. And then watching this brought it back the fuck back up. <laughs> so now it's like through the roof. And I'm like, I got to get it off my ass. I got to fucking start. I want to make a movie. It. I'm going to yeah. make a fucking movie. It doesn't matter how old I am. No, it Just doesn't. Just get out there and do it. Uh -uh. And maybe you won't make a shit ton of money. Maybe you won't be at the, maybe you won't be able to have the, uh, the fucking, the, the joy to slap Chris Rock in the face at the Oscars. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you've made a movie. You've accomplished something. Right. And I think that is a fucking amazing feat. Right. I think anyone who has set out to make a movie scrambled together to fucking create whatever vision they had, put it on, and it's out there. I think that's an amazing fucking accomplishment. Oh, yeah. And I think you should all be proud of that. You know? <laughs> I think so. Everyone should be proud when they make something like that. I agree. And I think, I think that's why I do Trauma Month. I think that's why we do that here, because that's the heart of Trauma Month. You know, 
follow your dreams, children. <laughs> follow your dreams. The more you know. Do, 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 do. But I, you know, I, I think for what it is, uh, The Good Exorcist is a great movie. Oh, yeah. It's a great movie. Oh, is yeah. it perfect? Right? No, but it's a great movie. It's fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fucking fun. And you guys should all take the time to watch this. If you haven't already, I hope you're, you've watched it. You know, uh, you can, like I said, every movie this month is streaming on Troma now. Like, you go, so go pay. It's like five bucks a month and you get a week free. Oh, nice. Yeah. A week you can watch free. all these movies in a week. Fuck yeah. If you binge like I do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but okay. Okay. So, so for the rest of this month, we're going to go, we're going to do some, some different movies, you know, not, not so funny. Well, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> you know, it's trauma. <laughs> right. So there might be some comedy here, but that's, uh, that is, uh, that, that is the good exorcist from 2018. We had a good time with that, but next week, next week, we're getting to back. We're get, we're doing a slasher, man. Oh yeah. Trauma produ- uh, put out this slasher, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. We got a slasher. It's called Graduation Day. Okay, I was like, what is it? got Lene Quigley in it. (laughs) Oh, we like a good Lene Quigley movie. Yeah, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. I'm not sure if you're going to like it or not. (laughs) (laughs) Madman definitely turned that. I don't know if you're going to... I thought every slasher you were going to love, but Madman definitely threw me for a loop. (laughs) I thought you would have loved that movie, but you didn't. And that's interesting. So we'll see. We'll see when we tackle graduation day next week. But until then, keep shooting for the stars. Make your fucking movies. You could do it. Yes. Don't fucking give up. You got this. I'm Lee Evans saying stay spooky. And I'm Brittany. Stay horrific. Uh, bye bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. To get a hold of us and submit your stories, fan mail, and death threats, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and nightofthehorrorfile.com. Our theme song was written and performed by John Brennan. Used with permission. Find John at shopjb.bandcamp.com and at badtechno.com. If you like what you hear, leave a good review wherever you listen to podcasts and share the show on your social media. See you next week. We'll be right back.